My name is Met Demasi. I will be your ring announcer and host for this evening. For those of you who haven't noticed yet, uh, I don't really speak Hungarian, or as you dear folk would call it, Nem Beszelek Mayarul. However, I do know one thing, and that is one thing that has brought us all here together, and it is the fact that me, Seretun Pirkozny! And it's not just Pirkozny, it's also me, Seretun Passion Pro! I guess with that, we can start with our first match of the evening, and it is a singles match, scheduled for one fall. From the heart of Hungary, the beautiful city of Budapest, and namely, from the Budapest Dojo, we bring you the Spirit Zone. And we're kicking things off hot here in a match between Axel Fox and Lawrence Roman. Met Demasi here, your English language commentator, coming to you live from the Budapest Dojo. And we are on the cusp of Passion Pro 9 at the beautiful lake of Balaton here in Hungary. Axel Fox and Lawrence Roman quickly into a power elbow tie up, but Roman's strength came into play. Fox, well done, redirecting him into the, into the corner. Roman clearly taking offense to that with his new, one could say, rotten attitude since joining Ambos a little over a year ago. Handshake. Accepted by Roman. Oh, of course. Of course. I don't know what else you'd expect from Lawrence Roman now. A little, a little too naive was Axel Fox there as Roman grinding his eyes against the ropes. And this vicious new mentality for Roman. Fox getting to know that real quick. Ducks the clothesline. Ducks the back elbow. Goes under, does Fox. And what a disc in his forearm. That days the pit bull. Fox hits the ropes, comes back, and what a hurricane Rana. Wonderfully done by Fox. And that ravenous look in Roman's eyes, caught there by Fox. And what a blow to the midsection by Axel Fox. It was very quickly taking the reins in this match very early on. And that will be key against Lawrence Roman. They have to break it up there. In the in the off the ropes and sends Fox over and what a boost straight to the face and here goes the barrage of offense there by Roman. Our referee Laura Korczak has to step in between and keep Roman in check. It'll be a long night for our referee Laura Korczak there but maybe an even longer night for Axel Fox who gets driven into those turnbuckles with incredible forces. Roman goes into the cover here, kick out by Fox. And Axel Fox, five years of wrestling experience. Incredibly talented young man from Poland. Quite often, the underdog due to his size, but he's also incredibly intelligent. 
incredibly smart fighter. As he makes his way up, snap there, there by Roman. What a kick! Straight into the back of Fox there. Back into the cover goes Lawrence. Roman kick out by Fox. Still has a lot of fight in him, but Roman will find a way to choke it out of you one way or another. Roman now. Quickly taking control and slowed down the tempo of this match. Fox, though, still attempting to put in a fight. Gonna need a lot more fight after that snap. Suplex into the cover here. Kick out by Fox. And there you see Roman jaw jacking with our referee, Laura Korczak. He's going to have a busy night at Passion Pro 9 in Balaton. We do know that Ambos will take part in a 4v4 match. But we don't know again soon. Goodness! Looks like he's aggravated the Fox there. Trying to mount a comeback to fight back as Fox stops himself from hitting those turnbuckles too hard and boot up. Roman catches it, European uppercut. Sends Fox into the other turnbuckle here, up and over by Fox. Rolls backwards, and you can see that that's, that's had an effect on him. As has all the offense that Roman has given him, but seemingly not enough. Becoming rabid as he charges at Roman, catches him there in the corner. Hits the ropes, and a springboard back elbow by Axel Fox into the cover here against Lawrence Roman, and kick out by Roman. Signs of life here by Fox. Maybe a little more, a few more cries here and there as well, but the question is, will it be enough to get, oh, 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 looking for that Firefox DDT there. Roman catches him with an incredible lariat. Oh, this, this might be the end here, this might be the end. Up and down that front slam by Roman. The cover here. And the win! The winner of this match, by way of pinfall, the pitbull of Ambos, Lawrence Roman! And Lawrence Roman manages to secure the victory here in the Spirit Zone in our opening match. Incredibly hard fought there by, by, by Axel Fox, who gets sent straight into the and out of the ring, this vicious mentality of Roman and the vicious mission of domination by Ambos. I'll tell you one thing, that domination definitely coming through in this match for Roman. But there are still quite a few matches to come here on the Spirit Zone. Kick things off, however, Roman successful. Well, how about we keep the action moving with a tag team match scheduled for one fall? There we go, now we begin our second match and it is two on two action here as El Guapo and David Adili join forces to face a team from France in the form of Ingvar and Scar. El Guapo now very quickly in control. What incredible technical ability there to stay on that wrist lock. El Guapo, Spanish bred, lives in Denmark, formerly a professional mixed martial arts fighter. It's quite intense, but he's got quite a bit of flash, just like that moment there as he's fully in control of Ingvar here. Ingvar definitely being out-wrestled at this moment here by El Guapo. But 
Only early tidings so far. Only the beginning, and there you see Ingvar grabbing the side headlock position against El Guapo. He's gonna have to find a way out of here. Oh, there you go, the, the power of Ingvar coming into play here. Looking for another lever as El Guapo turns it around, and he's got him in his own headlock now. Ingvar now pushing El Guapo to the ropes, sends him over, uh-oh. A little, uh, a little, wow. <laughs> wow, I don't know if you want to do that, but that little wardrobe malfunction might come back to bite Ingvar in the rear end, pardon the pun. Quickly now, tagging in the Fang of the East. Scar. For that, El Guapo tags in David Adili. This is going to be a very interesting competition between these two men. Incredibly overwhelming strength on the side of Scar, but David Adili is known as an exceptional athlete for a reason. Definitely a weight advantage for Scar, but Adili with a powerlifting background just could be able, well, there you see, to withstand the power of Scar, and that he does. Off goes Adili. And this is, oh no, Scar. It was a trick, gut kick there. Oh, ducks it, does Adili, and here comes Adili. No, another duck. Wow, the power, the strength of Adili, like a running train. Now Scar up and over. Oh my goodness, the strength there into the cover here against Scar, kick out. And the young man from Frankfurt in Germany in the driver's seat against this beast in Scar, tag into Guapo. Both men sending Scar into the ropes, comes back and caught there by the back elbow. So far working quite well in tandem are. There we go. Shining Wizard by El Guapo into the cover here against Scar. And another kick out from the Fang of the East. Guapo taking a minute there, basking in adulation, but he'll have to be careful. Scar there being looked over by a referee. Christoph, oh, poke to the eye! And now Ingvar from behind! Now we can see exactly what the statement of intent here is from the two men from France. Win at all costs, by all means. Now it's... What the scar here in store here, grabbing El Guapo by the hair, not by the nose. Oh, as humiliating as it is, painful. You can understand now, you can see why Scar is seen as such a ferocious and dangerous competitor over in France. El Guapo now in the wrong part of town. Tack to Ingvar, trying to stop Scar there, but. Might as well be hitting a brick wall. Ingvar now has him up, sends him down with ferocious intent with that body slam into the cover. Kick out by El Guapo. Scar, uh, Ingvar, pardon me, however, staying right on top of things. And there we go, commentator curse. Here comes Scar now. What a punch, a couple punches there into the midsection of El Guapo. Suplex there by Scar into the cover here against El Guapo, hooking both, hooking the arms, and hooking that left leg, making it very difficult for El Guapo to kick out. You could see there, after the suplex and that kick out, you can imagine the strain on his lower back. Still putting up a good fight though. Those strikes coming in. As I said, MMA background, he'll, he'll definitely know how to throw. Quite a few very dangerous punches, or kick, or an elbow. There you see El Guapo signs a left. Quick reaction there by Scar to make sure he can't reach his corner. Inziguri flush right on the ear. Crawling to Adili, and he makes the tag. 
And here comes the young man from Frankfurt, Adili. Two clotheslines for Ingvar, ducks under Scar. Drop kick. Caught him quite enough to send him into the corner. Adili now picking his targets, and here he comes, a barrage of clotheslines. Back and forth. Exploder suplex against Scar. Here comes Ingvar, caught him. Spinebuster firmly in the driver's seat is a daily and kick out there by Ingvar. Ingvar manages to get his shoulders up before that three count, but you can see the damage. The toe of the Enziguri there into the face of a daily. Up in the fireman's carry position here. Adili rocking Ingvar there with a couple of powerful back elbows. Tagged there to El Guapo. Scar goes right over the top rope. Oh, oh there, oh, miscommunication. And right on his face, lands Ingvar. Here goes El Guapo. Chicken wing, and he taps. Ingvar taps. The winners of this match by way of submission, the team of the Ausnahmetalent, David Adili and El Guapo. The exceptional athlete and El Guapo. They managed to pick up a very important victory here at the Spirit Zone. Both men will be in action in Balaton. What a great way to kick off this wrestling weekend here in Hungary. A victory for them. And it's back to the drawing board for the two men from France. Ladies and gentlemen, so as we said at the start of the show, we all love wrestling. And that term is very fitting because that is the motto of the company that presents us the next match. And this match will be a Four-way dance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the following match is sanctioned by the WXW Championship Board of Directors. And it is for the WXW Wrestling Academy Championship. <laughs> When the match begins, the man in charge of all the action inside and outside the ring will be the man standing to my right from Göttingen in Germany, Alex Haida. <laughs> and now the competitors in this match, starting from my furthest right. He is 1 meter 95 tall. He is 105 kilograms. Hailing from Munster in Germany, Danny Frey! <laughs> the next challenger in this match, standing to my right, he stands at 190 centimeters tall. He weighs in at 90 kilograms from Hanau in Germany. The poster boy, Alex Duke! And the next challenger in this match, standing to my left. He stands at 180 centimeters tall. He weighs in at 105 kilograms from the Arabian Nights, the Alpha of the Sahara! Zafar Amin! <laughs> and now, the champion, standing furthest to my left. He stands at 175 centimeters tall. Weighs in at 75 kilograms from Dresden in Germany. He is the WXW Wrestling Academy Champion, Nick Schreier! <laughs> and 
And four-way dance action here for the WXW Wrestling Academy Championship. This is one of two championship matches we will have on the card this evening. Of course, in the main event, the Passion Pro World Championship will be defended by Tristan Archer against the perfect man, Jacob Crane. Now, though, these four men in the middle of the ring. And the match begins officially. Nick Schreier, Danny Frey, Alex Duke, and Zafar Amin. A couple of handshakes there, and Amin and Duke also look at, oh, of course, of course. I don't know what to, what otherwise to expect in a match that involves two men like Alex Duke and Zafar Amin. Seemingly a short alliance has definitely began here very quickly, but just as quickly, Schreier and Frey have also decided that they need to make a little alliance. Schreier now fighting with Amin. Frey has Duke in the other corner. Looks like they, looks like, oh, that cooperation paying dividends. Frey body slams Duke onto Amin. And now both men as quickly as possible out of the ring. Probably the soundest strategy. I can't say the same about Schreier's strategy there to try and Roll up a man of Danny Frey's size. Drops under after the, oh, there we go, shoulder tackle. The immense power of Danny Frey coming into play, into the corner. Oh, they're caught. Fireman's, fireman's carry position. Schreier fighting back and now up into those ropes and back out. Oh, there we go. Looks like Duke and Amin. Singling out the bigger man in Frey and sending him into those wooden steps. Schreier intercepted as well on his flight path. And Duke now in the middle of the ring here with Schreier sends him down face first into the cover here. Duke's looking to steal it, but Amin very quickly onto the scene there. Oh, Amin, Amin is pinning him. I'm not sure that was fully unintended there by Zafar Amin. Wiley's one way to uh, describe him. I'm pretty sure quite a few other people have much less flattering adjectives for Amin. As now Schreier is stuck between both men there. And Freight quickly eliminated again. Amin right on top of things. And namely on top of Schreier who has been the WX oh, cover. Uh, I mean, seemingly being trying to be a little playful here. Have to be careful. Quite often, these alliances and these multi-man matches are quite short-lived. Only one person can come out with a victory here and with the WXW Wrestling Academy Championship, which Nick Schreier has held since its inception. Oh, there we go. What a boot there. What a boot there. Yeah, Nick Schreier has held that championship since May, since it was introduced at the biggest WXW Wrestling Academy show prior to WXW Fan 2023. Oh, what a chop there! Duke and Amin leaving two marks on the chest of Schreier there. And this alliance seemingly has definitely given them Domination in this match. Schreier catches himself on the ropes. A couple of boots dished out, and now here he goes. Ducks under. Springboard. Oh, caught there. Caught there by both men. And, oh, double front slam. All that impact onto the spine of Schreier. The question is, when is this going to burst? When is this bubble of friendship going to burst between Duke and Amin? Oh, Schreier now trying to fight back. Oh, miscommunication there. There goes Duke. And here comes Frey. 
catches a mean flush. And now it's a mean. It's a mean stuck between two angry men. Couple of farms. Here comes Duke. Oh, looks like Amin's out and Duke's in. Makes little difference. Both men with incredibly punchable faces, and that's exactly what Frey and Schreier are doing. Another miscommunication there. Duke now. What a knee there. In control of Nick Schreier. Sends him up and down with that brain buster. Frey now coming in, forearm onto Duke, sends him into the ropes, and here he comes back into the black hole slam by Danny Frey. Duke rolling out faster than Frey could cover him. Amin now. Oh, here he goes. Barrage kick by Amin. Here comes the champion, Schreier. Inziguri coming back in. Here he goes. Over and around. What a satellite DDT by Schreier. Amin Risley rolling out, but he's not safe. Here comes Schreier. Flying through that middle rope, and now it's Frey and Duke in the middle of the ring. Schreier, oh, oh, Duke, Duke, kicking the ropes while the referee's distracted. Kicking the ropes, no, and a handful of tights, no. The winner of the match by pinfall, and hereby the new WXW Wrestling Academy Champion, Alex Duke! Disbelief on the face of Nick Schreier. Arguments between our referee, Danny Frey, and our, between our referee, Alex Heider, and Danny Frey, but one man there, very clearly capitalizing on the chaos, and that is Alex Duke, who crowns himself the second WXW Wrestling Academy Champion of all time. That's the chaos of these multi-man matches. And with that, the poster boy is now your new WXW Wrestling Academy Champion. We've seen everything so far. We've seen singles matches. We've seen tag team matches. We've seen a four-way dance for a championship. What we haven't seen yet is a women's match. The next match is a singles match scheduled for one fall. And here we go now, Reika going head to head with Corey Zero, the black core as she's known in France. And Reika, very much a, one of the freshest new faces here in Hungary. And still very much effective so far, very much impactful since her debut here at Passion Pro. And Corey Zero is going to look to leave the same, if not a bigger, impact here in her debut match at the Spirit Zone. And an impact she did leave with that shoulder tackle takes Reka straight down. And Reka now ducks under the clothesline, catches her, hip toss straight into the cover for Reka. And kick out just as quick from Corey Zero. Corey Zero wrestled and trained at Over the Top Wrestling, OTT over in Ireland. Very methodic, very cerebral, meticulous. Quite often her strategies revolve around weakening her opponent's arm. Set up for that Kimura. Dangerous grappler, but equally so. Greka here into the cover against Zero, and another kick out there equally as dangerous as Reka with her. Power lifting background. Her 11th match, I believe this is. She's looking to make it quite quick there, looking for that sit-out power slam of hers. 
Caught there by Zero, sends her into the turnbuckle, but she catches herself and Zero saw it coming. Oh, there you go. Busting that arm against the shoulder. What does she have here in store? Oh, no, sends Vika's left arm straight into those ropes and look at that sadistic smile on her face. Corey Zero realizes that she's found the opening here. Taking a minute to relish in her destruction before she goes for it into the cover here and a kick out from Reika. You could see there she used her legs for all of that momentum. Nothing coming out of that left arm. And how could anything come out of that left arm after those two attacks there and now zeroing in is Corey Zero. Putting the pressure on her shoulders, on Reika's shoulders. And on that elbow, Nick is going to have to tap into that resilience that we've seen from her time and time before against Corey Zero. As I said, her 11th match so far doing quite well there. Up and down by Reika despite the weakened arm. Of course, the strategy of attacking that left arm is going to come into play quite well for Corey Zero, nullifying much of the strength in Reika. Oh no, what is she, no, 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 oh wow! That aforementioned strength, and now it's Corey Zero grasping her left arm. Well done there by Reika to use all of that strength in her reserves. And now here she comes with a barrage of forearms, taking Corey Zero off her feet twice and now into the corner. Rolls over, docks that clothesline, and short arm clothesline there by Reika. Could it be enough there? And a cover kick out by Corey Zero. Well done there by Reika to put her left knee onto Zero's right arm. Adding that much more pressure onto the shoulders, onto the mat here. It looks like there's going to be a lot more pressure coming. Looking for that sit-up power slam again. Zero, though, in control of that left arm again. Looking to cinch in. That Kimura could be very dangerous for Reika. Who rolls her up very well done there. Reika into the cover and kick out. Again, you see her shielding. Shielding that left arm. What a kick. Zero now. Cinching in that Kimura, and it's cinched in. That Kimura cinched in against Zero, but my goodness, the strength, the strength of Reika! Power slam into the cover, and for the win! The winner of this match by way of pinfall, Reika! Wonderfully done there by Reika to withstand. Withstand that strategy of Corey Zero. Excellently, excellently, excellently executed there by Corey Zero, but it wasn't enough. The overwhelming power of Reika puts her on top in this match here at the Spirit Zone. The following match is a six-man tag team match scheduled for one fall. Six-man action now here coming to you as Avatar. Seemingly looking to take a bite out of a ring announcer. I don't think I've ever seen a ring announcer run that fast. As I said, three on three action here. Elia Bloom, Anil Marek, and Yuval Goldschmidt are set to go head to head with Maverick, who is seemingly quite enthralled by Emmy Lewis's uh, physique and his muscle control. Seemingly Avatar as well. Seen very little that's impressed Avatar, but Emmy Lewis's build definitely is it. 
as I said, Emil Lewis and Maverick team up with Avatar and seemingly it is Elia Bloom and Emil Lewis to start things off. Bloom, of course, one of the best talents, best young talents coming out of Germany, out of the WXW Academy. Emil Lewis, the self-proclaimed apex of Scandinavia. As he calls it, he comes from the peak of civilization, that being Scandinavia. Even there, he's at the very top, cream of the crop. And that's how you harvest some crop. Elia Bloom, beautiful drop kick. And it looks like Emilian Lewis is definitely not the apex so far. At the beginning of this match, tag into Anil Marek as Bloom and Marek tandem offense there and drop kicks in stereo. Both sides into the cover here on Lewis and a kick out by Emilian Lewis. Marek, another incredible young talent coming out of Germany. A few months back, he came back from injury after being on the shelf for a year. Here he goes, forearm into the ropes and coming back with a sling blade. Marek now into the cover here on Emil Lewis and another kick out by Lewis. Could have been quite quick. There, Maverick. Maverick grabbing the leg of Marek. Getting involved here and Lewis making use of that distraction. Oh, what a fisherman neck breaker there by Emil Lewis. Marek definitely feeling that as he's pushed into the corner and a tag here for Maverick. Underhanded tactic has definitely helped them gain control. Maverick landing with both arms on the back of Marek, and now using those ropes to scrape the eyes of Anil Marek. Tell you what, this new attitude that we've seen some from Maverick in recent times is at best unacceptable, at worst utterly vile. But ever the dangerous opponent is Maverick, with, as is Marek. Knee up there by Maverick, gains him control again, and looks like he's looking to, now yeah, there, Marek reverses an attack to Yuval Goldschmidt, looking to come in here and use his speed, mobility, and technical ability to take down Maverick. So far successful, oh, Maverick out of the way. Goldschmidt lands on his feet after an incredible moonsault, couple of, Blows into the ropes, goes Goldschmidt coming back with a powerful European uppercut into the cover here and a kick out. And the incredible speed of Yuval Goldschmidt has absolutely blitzed Maverick. Into the ropes, oh my goodness! Avatar intercepting Goldschmidt. Oh, caught there by Maverick and another timely distraction there. Up he goes and down he goes. Goldschmidt straight onto this face. And springboard cross body into the cover here. Kick out there by Goldschmidt. Maverick now goading Bloom. So far, two timely distractions against the rules, I might add, has helped the team of Maverick, Avatar, and Emil Lewis gain control for the main part of this match so far. The majority of the time, and now Lewis tagged in. He is now the legal man. Goes straight to the head of Goldschmidt. He's going to need to find a way to mount a comeback or find a tag, but Lewis there pushing him into the, his corner. Maybe a little too much hubris, but this time doesn't come back to bite him. What an exploder there by Lewis into the cover against Goldschmidt and kick out. Despite Lewis hooking both legs. Frustration there on his face. Only a grimace of pain on the face of Yuval Goldschmidt, who is going to need to find a way to fight back, as he has been trying ever since he was intercepted by Avatar. Lewis now setting up for another exploder. No, up for a body slam. Goldschmidt lands on his feet. Couple of forearms there, and a third. Goldschmidt here. What a belly to belly by Goldschmidt. 
Lewis is fully rocked. The tag here for Maverick. Goldschmidt trying to make it to his corner, but here comes Maverick. Oh, takes Maverick out. Bloom, however, still on the apron. Goldschmidt being dragged over again, kicked away. Oh, Avatar seems to be knocked away. And Bloom now, the legal man. Avatar blown away again. Drop kick by Bloom. Here comes Lewis, caught him. Swinging neck breaker. Oh, another one here for Maverick. Kip up. And a war cry from, from Aaliyah Bloom. Got him up. What does he have in store here? Oh, what a suplex there by Bloom. Incredible power on display from the young man from Bochum. Bloom now, however, crossing eyes with the monster that is Avatar. Bloom will feel like he's up to the challenge. Question is, is he indeed? He has to use his speed, his superior speed and mobility to dodge Avatar's attacks. So far successful, Bloom, I think, slowly realizing what he signed himself up for. Avatar shaken, yes, but definitely not dropping off of his feet. Now he's caught Bloom looking for the choke slam. Bloom. Very well done there, ducks the big boot, double boots into Avatar's face, and here comes Bloom! Shotgun drop kick. Doesn't even send Avatar off of his feet. Avatar, now prime position. Catches him with a crossbody into the cover here, and a three count. There it is. The winners of this match, by way of pinfall, Yuval Goldsmith, Anil Marek, and Elia Bloom. Elia Bloom manages with that crossbody to secure the victory for his team. And it is the team from Germany successful on this venture here into Budapest. All three men will be involved in matches tomorrow at Balaton. But for here tonight at the Spirit Zone, Bloom, Marek, and Goldschmidt secure the victory. One little question for you guys, and I'm gonna ask it in Hungarian, <clears throat> so pardon my pronunciation. Jól erziket magatokat! Then let's keep that magatokat going on with another match. And this match is gonna have the ring very, very full. So, the following match is a battle royal! And here we go, this battle royal firmly underway. Many of the talents in this battle royal, as are many of the talents that we've seen so far in the Spirit Zone. The people who took part in the wrestling camp over the last week, held by the likes of Michael Nuts, the Arrows of Hungary, Icarus and Dover, Robert Dreisker, and the Greedy Souls. That being Danny Jones and Brendan White, who we will see later on here in action. See there. Real deal, Mr. Z and Gustav Griffin from Poland. Yeah, there you see as he calls himself, announces himself. Working on Hunyadi Tamash and now Alex Bergna in the red singlet. Goblin teaming up against Asara from Saigon in Vietnam. 
Over in the far corner, you could see AC Brack from England going head to head with Party City. Benny Backus. Party time, Benny Backus from Denmark. Double suplex there onto Hunyadi Tamash. Griffin and Mr. Z definitely taking a moment there to draw Jack to the audience. Leaving their mark. It looks like they're looking to leave their first mark here by eliminating Tamash, who fights back. He's trying to fight back. Mr. Z catches him again from behind, but Soldier of Fortune putting up as much of a fight as he can. Or he, he just might just might eliminate Mr. Z. Catches him now. He's got him in that full Nelson. Here comes Gustav Griffin. Oh, no! Mr. Z has been eliminated! Tamash dodges out of the way and Gustav Griffin inadvertently eliminates his partner in Mr. Z. Now it's Tamash and Griffin. There you see Goblin and Alex Bergna. They have Asada in a very dangerous position here. Goblin up to the top rope. Seemingly Oh. Goblin has been eliminated. Well, the only thing I know about Goblin is that nobody knows where he's from and his actions don't really have much meaning. He might have lost his footing there up top. That's why you call it high risk and high reward. There are more so high consequences, but see Benny Bacchus relishing in the pain that he's now inflicting onto Gustav Griffin. Party time, Benny Backus. Quite an unorthodox human being, but I think we've definitely got a smorgasbord of unorthodox human beings in that ring right now. Backus now looking for a clothesline, but Griffin clearly unshaken. European uppercut there by Griffin, and he sent Backus toppling over, but holding on with both hands. Trying to make his way back into the ring, and he does. Back at, maybe celebrating a little preemptively. Benny Backus has been eliminated. And so far, Gustav Griffin, one would say the MVP of this match, two eliminations to his name, even if one is inadvertent. Here comes Asada trying to eliminate him, but so far, Griffin's size has come to his advantage. Asada now using his speed. Shotgun drop kick sends Griffin off of his feet. And now here comes AC Brack. What a destructive back elbow from the young man from England. Brack now. And Asada going right at it. Now Asada trying to eliminate Brack. Almost. Oh, and here comes, here comes Griffin. Griffin sends both men out. AC Brack and Asada have both been eliminated. And Gustav Griffin adds another two to his tally. Now up to four eliminations in this battle royal. He's eliminated everybody but Goblin. Now Bekna and Griffin, it looks like they're going to be working on the same team here against Hunyadi Tamash, the soldier of fortune, in a difficult position. Looks like they're going to look to thin the herd a little more. Then probably go at it one on one. But Tamash fighting back. Hunyadi Tamash has got Berkner in the corner. Now on to Griffin. Here comes Berkner though. Alex Berkner, the young man from Austria. And Griffin stomping down onto Tamash. Berkner now looking to eliminate Tamash. Sends him over the ropes. Oh, no, no, no. Griffin. Griffin turning on his ally. Bekna, however, realizing and now attacking Griffin. Another blow straight onto the chest of Griffin there. Oh, break to the eyes. Break to the eyes by Griffin. I don't think, I think within their infighting, they haven't realized that it doesn't seem that Tamash has been eliminated yet. Definitely hasn't been announced yet. 
Griffin sending Beckner over the rope. Alex Beckner has been eliminated. And Gustav Griffin. Now yeah, there he goes. Here's your confirmation. Still in the match is the soldier of fortune. And he's looking to reap some misfortune here. Onto Griffin. What a spear. What a spear by Tomasz. And now over the ropes goes Griffin. Gustav Griffin has been eliminated. And so your winner, the soldier of fortune, Horniadi Tomasz. And Horniadi Tomasz stamps his presence here at the Spirit Zone. A successful contract in this battle royal for Gustav Griffin, who eliminated almost every other man in that match. He's going to have to console himself some way. For Hunyadi Tamash, a mission successfully accomplished. Uh, we've seen a lovely battle royal, but let's get back to some singles competition because the next match is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Robert Dreisker goes head to head against El Pasión. Not the likeliest of uh, pairings, I would say, but. Oh, oh. There we go. Robert Dreisker. Taking things off very quickly with his strength. But he'll do well not to underestimate El Pasión. Very little is known about the man from Mexico other than the fact that he once gave his poncho to a freezing family in the streets of Budapest in the middle of a storm. Robert Dreisker, on the other hand, I doubt he'd give anything to anybody in need, such as his attitude since joining Ambos. As you can see, one of the most experienced wrestlers in all of Europe is Dreisker. Trying to nullify the mobility of El Pacion. So far unsuccessful here as El Pacion tees off on Dreisker. Forearm after forearm, now he looks to send him into the ropes, and he does. Up and over goes El Pacion. Dreisker follows. Oh! Ole! Mind games being played against Robert Dreisker. I think he's going to take quite a bit of offense to that. El Pacion using his speed out, out of the ring and, and, and out of the, the building. Well, there, there goes El Pacion Dreisker following suit into the, into the night here in the city of Budapest. Here comes El Pacion running back and closes the door on Robert Dreisker. Ole, Robert Dresker finally caught up. Oh, no, no, he's going to need a minute. Sending him on a goose chase. Or in this case, I guess a burro chase. Here comes El Pacion up and over and catches Dresker. Very quickly become a fan favorite has El Pacion after he arrived in Budapest with nothing but the po his poncho, his sombrero, and a donkey. El Pacion, oh no, I don't know. Looking for a fireman's carry position here against Dreisker. Dreisker, however, catches him quite hard. 
What a knee straight to the midsection. Takes all the wind out of Ed Patio. Dreskers looking to take more than just the wind out of him. Grueling stomps there. Ed Patio now. That's the one thing he didn't want to do against Robert Dresker, get caught. Those clubbing blows from Dreisker, and now he sends Ed Bathione into the turnbuckle. Caught there, my goodness, what an avalanche into the corner there, and Ed Bathione just drops like a sack of potatoes into the cover here. Heard Dreisker and a kick out from Ed Bathione. Dreisker now has to find out what to do next here against Ed Bathione. For Ed Bathione, the big question is how do you get Dresker off of you, close to the midsection here, but not strong enough to break the hold that Dresker has. Matter of fact, gets punished by that vicious forearm and then a vicious body slam following suit. Dresker now back into the cover and another kick out there by El Pacion. Headlock position here by Dresker. Definitely not as fun loving as El Pacion. him against Dreisker unless he can find a way out. He's trying to find it with these blows to the midsection. Now up, back down again. Another vicious body slam and now Dreisker splashing down but El Pacion moves out of the way. This might be the window of opportunity for the man from Mexico. Oh no, Dreisker moves out of the way into the turnbuckle. Moves out of the way, another senton. Nobody home. Cutter by El Pacion. Into the cover against Robert Dreisker. Could he have it? No, kick out. Kick out by Dreisker. Firing himself up. El Pacion might strike again. Oh no. No, no way. No way. Airplane spin. How does he have a... Oh no. His back gave way. Dreisker, however, that airplane has been very effective. Oh, no! No! Cover! Dreisker! And the win! The winner of this match by pinfall, Robert Dreisker! Oh, no. El Pacio and airplane spin, incredible feat of strength. But. For pride comes the fall. And I'll tell you, whoever fell, it was definitely Robert Dreisker. Dreisker lands with his full weight onto El Pacion, and with that, knocks him out. Dreisker still suffering from that airplane spin. Oh, he's, he's come to his wits. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, snap suplex there by Dreisker. Well, Pathio, I think he might have been looking for a sign of sportsmanship. Instead, he gets suplexes. And here comes the third suplex there. El Pathio laid out flat by the power of Robert Dreisker, who, despite the win, is definitely less than tickled by El Pathio. I, I generally have no idea what to say. Here's. I don't know if Robert Dreisker in a sombrero is what I thought I would see on this day, but it's definitely what we see for better and for, or for worse. Robert Dreisker successful here at the Spirit Zone. we move things forward to our next match. This next match will be a tag team match scheduled for one fall.
Tag team action is what we have here now for you as the greedy souls go head to head with Julia Shvechi and Prince of Pleasure Darius. I don't think Brendan White quite knows what kind of mistake he just made. Well, he will live to regret throwing his jacket at Julia Shvechi. That jacket is bathing in the musk of the bull of the village. And that is the kindest, least descriptive way I could possibly phrase that. Having said that, Julius Ritchie and Darius will be facing off against a very, very dangerous tandem in the form of the greedy souls who have all but taken over British wrestling as now the match officially begins. Julius Ritchie and Brendan White, the bull of the village against the workhorse. Going to take a lot to find out which one of these two men is going to back up first. There you see Goliash Uchi definitely pushed Brendan White closer to the to his side of the ropes, but White, very experienced, breaks the hold and now taking offense there to Goliash as Goliash comes right back in. And this is heavyweight wrestling at its finest. So two trains crashing into each other, but White, ever the savvy veteran, gets the knee up. Here comes White. Oh, into Uchi. Uchi comes back. The force of Guliash Uchi takes Brendan White off of his feet and now up for that body slam. Tag into Darius. And now here comes the Prince of Pleasure into the cover now against. Brendan White, pleasure it was not for White, who now very quickly makes the tag in to Danny Jones. Into the headlock here, into the ropes. The power of Danny White comes into play, runs, drop down, pass by, here comes Darius, flying back elbow, and the young man from Austria takes control of this match. White now in the corner, in the landing zone. For Darius, Inziguri there. Roll there by Darius, and now here he comes flying. Drop kick. Right on the mark into the cover here against Danny Jones, and a kick out by Jones. It'll take a lot more to keep Jones down, but definitely on the right path is the young man from Austria. Now he has him up in this fireman's carry position. But Jones fighting his way out into the ropes, back down. Oh, ducks under, ducks under both. Drop down, caught there by White, power slam. Goliash Ritchie sent off of the ropes. And now the Greedy Souls firmly in the driver's seat. To the cover here by White. Against Darius, kick out despite White grabbing hold of Darius's right arm and hitting it to the ground. And Darius here grabbing him by the nose and blocking a referee's view, blocking a referee Christoph's view. Some might call it a veteran's action. I call it dirty. That's not something the dirty souls are, or the greedy souls are afraid of. Dirty souls might be in that name as well. Two working class boys, childhood friends are Brendan White and Danny Jones. Experts in causing pain. They've been tagging together for five years. And they're now firmly in control of things here against Darius. And that is the difficulty that Guliash Uchi and Darius will have to face off of the fact that they are not an established tag team and they have much less experience. Back body drop there by Jones tagging to White, staying fresh and adding more to the punishment that Darius is going through. White now sent on full weight right onto the midsection into the cover here and another kick out by the Prince of Pleasure. 
It was clearly in a lot of displeasure here. Brendan White egging on Gulyash Ucci, and here comes Ucci. A referee, Kristoff, having to stop him, and that, that, that leading to a distraction. Now the, third, the, the greedy souls can take advantage of that. Ucci doing his partner more harm than help, but kick out there again by Darius. Darius is going to have to do his best to find the tag into the fresher Uchi, who you can be sure is very fired up to come into this match now. If he wasn't before, and there you see him, arm fully extended, it's Danny Jones. That's a powerful blow into the midsection here of Darius. Darius set for reading into that turnbuckle. Made of stone, Danny Jones. See exactly why. Even a stare. Steely eyed and firm. Dangerous, but maybe taking a little too much time. Humiliating Darius. Darius back up to his feet, and now he's fighting back. He might have lit a fire under Darius here as he lands blow after blow right onto Danny Jones. Oh, but it's caught there by a firm forearm. And that malicious look, there you see Brendan White with his leg right on top of the head of Darius, hitting him into place, and now Brendan White, what a suplex there into the cover here against Darius. Might be in a kick out. Resilient, but not as much impact as he had earlier on in the match with his kick outs. Darius very quickly being drained of power. Tag doesn't come in soon. I don't think Darius can hold out for much longer here. Loving blow there by White. Sent into the corner. Danny Jones knocked away. Darius now mounting a comeback, looking for his partner. Oh, caught by White, drops over, and now caught the lag. Did Brendan White sent away? And now tag, the tag to the bull of the village. Here it comes. Shoulder tackle after shoulder tackle. Bringing the greedy souls down onto the ground. And Uchi now. These jabs back and forth. The souls on wobbly feet. Oh, it caught there. Danny Jones very quick, now sent into the ropes as Uchi oh, breaks through, and here he comes, double clothesline. And a valiant war cry from the bull of the village, as he seems to notice the positioning of the greedy souls. Avalanche into the one corner, and into this next, back and forth. Oh, here comes Brendan White, oh, miscommunication, misdirection. Snap German suplex. And Gugliac Uchi has changed the reflection of this match. Here he goes, setting up for the cannon ball. Right on the mark. Jones charging in, out of the way, and here he goes, down onto that knee. Jones now right onto his back, into the cover here by Uchi, but here comes White from behind. Breaks up the cover, that could have been it. Now White still in the ring, trying to send Goliath out of the ring. Nope, White is the one that gets sent out. And another blow there by Uchi. Darius now tagged in. And it seems like these two unlikely partners just might start to find their rhythm in this match here. Great combination there, up onto the fireman's carry. Darius up and over Oshigoroshi into the cover here against Danny Jones. A kick out, kick out by Jones. And what a win it would have been for Darius and Uchi to knock off one of the best tag teams in Europe. Oh no, Brendan White pulls Julias Uchi out of the way and set straight into that unforgiving steel post. A roll up, roll up by Jones, roll up by Jones. A kick out by Darius. 
Jones catches him with the Inzaguri. Tag here now onto the workhorse, Brendan White, into the corner. Darius now shot off into the other corner. Turnbuckle again, sent into the boot of Jones, and then a boot from White. Oh. Setting up here for sold out, sold out, and the win. The winners of this match by pinfall, made of stone, Daddy Jones, the workhorse, Brendan White, the greedy souls. A valiant effort on the part of Darius and Guliash Uchi, but the greedy souls were not overcome by that resilience. Great fight shown with that sold out. The greedy souls secure their victory here at the Spirit Zone. And that will be great momentum that they will take with them onto Balaton and Passion Pro 9. The winners of this match made of stone, Danny Jones. The workhorse, Brendan White, the Greedy Souls. This has been an amazing spirit zone here in the Budapest Dojo. However, sadly, we've come to our last match of the evening, the main event. And it will be for the Passion Pro Wrestling World Championship. I call both competitors to the ring. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the following is the main event of the evening and it is for the Passion Pro Wrestling World Championship! Once the bell rings, the woman in charge of the action in and outside the ring will be the woman to my left, the referee, Laura Korczak! And I will now begin by introducing the competitors in this match, starting with the man to my left, the challenger. Standing at 175 centimeters tall, 95 kilograms from Warsaw and Poland, the perfect man, Jacob Crane. And now, your champion, standing at 180 centimeters tall, weighing in at 103 kilograms, hailing from Amiens in France, your Passion Pro World Champion, the French Revolution, Tristan! Archer! And the main event here at the Spirit Zone about to get underway. Tristan Archer will defend his Passion Pro Championship against the perfect man, Jacob Crane. And even before the bell rings, Jacob Crane is already as unpleasant a human being as he possibly could be. Cheers there for our referee, Laura Korczak. Give an assist there to Tristan Archer. Trying to make a point that Jacob Crane is quite easily the most unliked person in this room. Not a lot of information, but not a lot of new information. But I will tell you one thing, the only piece of new information that Jacob Crane wants is that he's won the Passion Pro Championship 
which he just might if he can overcome the French Revolution. And with that, the match is underway. Clearly the fans much more on the side of Tristan Archer there as Jacob Crane gets over across into the backwards position. Handful of hair there. Uh-oh. Uh, Crane wisely running away from the angry Archer. Definitely very proud of himself is Crane. Archer is going to prove a point here. And what a loud point it is. Yeah, it looks like Crane wants a turn now. An equally loud point, but on the other side of the spectrum for Jacob Crane. Right now, oh, what is he doing with that Passion Pro Championship? Our referee, Laura Korczak. Looks like, thankfully, he's only looking to prove a point. But it's not coming across very well against the French Revolution. Definitely know who the fans here at the Budapest Dojo want as their champion. Crane now. Uh, that's a face only a mother could love. Tell you, that's. Archer now. Wisely setting a referee, Laura Korczak, in the way, making sure Crane can't use this advantage. Uh, Crane seemingly announcing that corner's unlucky, and I definitely share Jason Archer's face expression there. I don't think there's a single angle that we've seen Jacob Crane's face from in this match that has had a positive reaction. I think that tells you all you need to know about Jacob Crane's face, his attitude, and everything else about him. Tristan Archer are going to humor him and get on this corner again. The result will be just the same. Oh, Crane! Crane sidestepping the referee. Looks like Crane's had enough. Took him long enough. But it definitely wasn't enough of an advantage here against the French Revolution. Archer now into the ropes. Over. Leapfrog there. Caught by Archer. The French Revolution sends Crane careening into that turnbuckle. Rolls away, does Archer, here he comes. Oh, caught there by the boot. Oh, not enough! Clothesline by Archer! Now an exploder! Sends Crane almost to the complete other side of the ring. Now Crane escaping out. Archer following suit. There he goes, grabs Archer, grabs Crane. And Hard forearm straight to the face. Crane now trying to fight back, and this would be Crane's biggest victory, potentially, of his entire career so far if he can capture the Passion Pro ch Championship. Right now, all he's, he captures is a face full of bench. Tristan Archer fully in control here. Side. Russian leg sweep straight onto the apron. 
Now that kick caught there by Crane. Crane has him. Oh, what a chop there by Crane. And then sends his leg against that apron. Archer now, dangerous position. It looks like Crane has found his weak spot. Dragon screw straight into the ropes and that left leg of Archer. Taken so much punishment so quickly. Crane has it in his sights. Figure four leg lock by Crane in the middle of the ring. Will we witness Jacob Crane's crowning? Here against Tristan Archer. Archer will have to find a way to either break the hold or make his way to the ropes. Crane now dragging himself. Oh wait, oh, oh. Crane using those ropes. Crane is, Crane was using the ropes. Archer trying to tell a referee, Laura Korczyk, but she didn't see it. Oh, Crane again, again, grabbing onto those ropes. Unbelievable. Again and again, Crane, oh. This time, she's caught on to it. Kicks his arm away. And Tristan Archer with a punch. Still locked in, however. But Archer might just turn things around, and he does. Switches the pressure. Now all the pressure is on Jacob Crane's legs. Archer. Crane makes it to those ropes. You have to wonder how much damage has been done to Archer's left leg. You see him beating on it. Oh, looking for Decapite. Dodged away, no, no, no. Oh, straight onto that left leg again. And then another dragon screw. Crane staying right on top of that leg. Making use of that weak spot. Fully targeting Archer's left leg. You can see Archer grimace of pain can hardly put any weight on it. This might be the key. This might be Archer's final night as Passion Pro champion. Crane now yet again has that left leg and he's using the ropes to his advantage. Another illegal action there, but Crane kicks the rope. And another kick to his leg. So far, the perfect man doing a good job of cutting down the French Revolution. But he'll have to stay right on top of things. Archer, one of the best in Europe. Oh, oh, this time though, Crane again looking for that figure four, but kicked away by Archer. Crane sent shoulder first into that steel post. Archer now limping away. A moment of respite for him. Here comes Crane, however. Lift that let right boot. Catches it over. Discus forearm by Archer, but there you can see he has to get back to those ropes. On one leg, Archer on the second rope. Here he comes, flying forearm. And Archer, even with one leg, somehow manages to reach Crane. Caught there. Oh, got him. Oh, fisherman neck breaker there by Archer. Flips it, flips Crane over into the cover. A kick out there by Crane. Archer understands that he needs to put this match away very quickly before his left leg is weakened even more. Keep in mind, he has to defend that championship if he comes out on top at Balaton. Oh, for looking for lateral, but Crane now. Crane in position for the perfect driver. Unlucky, no, oh, another kick there to that left leg. Low to the face and he just might have it. Calls for it. The perfect driver by Crane. And do we here witness a new Jurassic Pro champion? A kick out, 
A kick up by Archer. Just in time. And Crane, seemingly in disbelief. Shirley wondering what he has to do to keep Archer down at this point. And there he goes, look, looking for that. Oh, look, look, he was looking for it again, but rolled up by Archer. Rolled up, kick out. Kick out by Crane, he was looking for it again for that figure four leg lock. Now both men on their feet. Back and forth, what a blow by Archer. He has him up, looking for the coup d'etat, no. Crane sends him into the ropes, coming back here. Looking for that backstabber. Archer, well done, holding on to those ropes. Crashes and burns, does the perfect man. What a boot! What a boot by Archer! Into the cover, here, for the win! Oh, the kick out! Another kick out by Jacob Crane. And for Archer, right now in the driver's seat of this match, could he stamp his mark here at the Spirit Zone? La Terreur connects! Crane wobbly, comes back, oh, shoulder block straight into that left leg of Archer yet again. Well, here goes into the ropes. Archer though caught him, backslide here. Oh, lands over, short arm, close like decapite, decapite. And now Archer up for the coup, Deta on one leg, the cover, here, and the win. Your winner through pinfall, and still, your Passion Pro World Champion, the French Revolution, Tristan Archer. And on this day here at the Spirit Zone, the motto is Liberté, Égalité, Décapité. As Tristan Archer mounts a successful title defense here at the Spirit Zone against Jacob Crane, who came in through underhanded tactics and a very sound strategy of weakening that left leg. However, unsuccessful as it was. But for Archer, the work doesn't end here. He has to defend that championship now at Passion Pro 9 by the beautiful Lake of Balaton. And the question is, will the French Ladies Revolution- Ladies and gentlemen, your Passion Pro World Champion, the French Revolution, Tristan Archer. But the question going into Passion Pro 9 at Balaton is will the French Revolution rage on or will there be a new alpha here at Passion Pro?